Hello and welcome to Cricket Happenings, dear friends and subscribers. So your host Ram welcoming you on your daily edition of the Cricket Happenings show today. Uh, well, the writing was definitely on the wall, but one has to say that the Indian India put up a very very stern resistance. In fact, it also uh, India came into such a position that by tea time. Uh, one was also imagining whether India would go to win this match, uh, and the reason that was that happened was because of two players. One is K L Rahul, who went on to make 149 runs, and Rishabh Pant getting his maiden Test ton in only his, uh, I think it's only his second or third Test, and. Uh, his was a contribution of 114, 15 fours and four sixes, and India put on a 204 runs partnership to frustrate England. And uh, well, um, but England stood the test well, and then finally uh, Anderson was uh, called in, uh, and um, I mean they they managed to uh, price out this open, this pair of KL Rahul and Pant. Uh, who really gave some good entertainment and as I said it also made one believe at tea time that India now did not say the match they could even gone for victory because if you look at the victory margin <coughs> India uh, what India made was uh, 345 all out so it's only an 118 runs victory well but one was glad for England because Alistair Cook was uh, uh, it was his swan song in test cricket in his career and he would definitely covered himself with glory and England too <coughs> gave him a parting gift as uh, he, he bid adieu uh, to, tesh, uh, to, uh, to, his, uh, to his cricket career and um, so and also James Anderson uh, went on to pick up his 563rd wicket that of Mohamed Shami but he had to really really wait for it he could not make any inroads in the uh, in the morning session or the afternoon session, but in the final session, he, he, he clean bowled the tail end of Mohammed Shami uh, to now become the most prolific fast bowler uh, in world cricket as far as wickets were concerned, with claiming his 564th wicket. <coughs> and congratulations to uh, James Anderson. Well, uh, from here. Uh, so this is something which I'm going to just have a sort of a look at this match where England uh, won the series 4-1 and the score line uh, would probably suggest that England totally dominated but I have to say that India too dominated in patches uh, but um, finally it was England who took the cake. <laughs> so congratulations to England for winning the series against India 4-1. Other than that uh, what I'm going to look at is that, as you know, uh, part, uh, Australia and Pakistan uh, would be locked in a two-test series in United Arab Emirates, and Australia named the team today, but there were a few surprises. In fact, uh, Glenn Maxwell and Hanscom were dropped from the team, and in came in, uh, in came uh, Aaron Finch. So Aaron Finch uh, was uh, brought into the team, uh, and also <laughs> there was um, there was also one more player who came into the team. Uh, it was uh, Finch and Siddle. Peter Siddle made his made his uh, made his uh, way back into the team after quite a long time after the injury he suffered. So <laughs> these are the two uh, inclusions that happened. Uh, I will have a brief look at the team, and then the second unofficial test between Australia and India A ended up with India uh, actually uh, squaring it up. In the series, as uh, the first one was won by Australia, and the second one was won by India A, uh, which I will be talking about in a brief manner as well. But first, let's have a look at the fifth test, <coughs> India versus England, and this was the final test, uh, final test match of the series, and um, and it was um, care, and one would have probably thought in the morning that it was probably uh, a matter of uh, just a matter of uh, uh, time. Uh, when India Indian innings would have come to a halt, but uh, definitely full credit to KL Rahul and Rishabh Pant who got his maiden Test done. 
So now talking about the game, uh, the, the only the wicket that, um, in fact, England managed to um, get um, Ajinkya Rahane's wicket uh, very quickly in the morning itself uh, when he was caught by Jennings as he tried to sweep a delivery uh, and the ball went into the mid-wicket region uh, where Jennings actually uh, took the catch and Ajinkya Rahane was walking back after making 37 with five boundaries. <coughs> One was also uh, thinking as to whether, and then Hanuma Vihari came into bat, and uh, Hanuma Vihari, after his 50 in the maiden, uh, his maiden 50 in the first innings, uh, one was really looking forward to his batting. But today, Hanuma Vihari disappointed, as Hanuma Vihari was out for a duck. Now, <coughs> this ball, uh, it's the first duck to his uh, maiden 50, and it is maiden duck, and uh, this was a ball from Ben Stokes. Uh, which really came at an awkward height for the batsman and before he could drop the bat down the ball had actually feathered the shoulder of the bat <coughs> and uh, Vihari uh, was gone, caught balanced to a strokes for naught uh, and now the Indian score at that time stood at three uh, at uh, 121 for 5 at 121 for 5 who would have thought that I India these two, this pair of KL Rahul and Ajinkya Rahane would, sorry, not Ajinkya Rahane, Rishabh Pant, the wicketkeeper batsman, would put 204 runs uh, for the sixth wicket to frustrate the Englishman. And that's what they precisely did. KL Rahul uh, was um, very confident with his stroke making. Uh, he had only one way to play, and that was to bludge in the ball uh, to the boundary uh, most of the times. And KL Rahul was uh, very, very aggressive. Uh, he, he had the temerity to even lock the pace bowlers uh, into, the, into the side screen. <coughs> and he also hit one, uh, one, one scintillating shot of the bowling of Ben Stokes, where uh, he, he actually uh, put him over the cover region for a six and hitting a six over the cover region. And that was done very well. He was on the back foot and just slammed it over the cover region for a six, which was wonderfully done by KL Rahul. So KL Rahul was all about aggression. And then when Rishabh Pant came into the mix, one could imagine, because Rishabh Pant is also a player who likes to get on with the game. And there was runs were just coming in, were just coming in uh, uh, in a breezy fashion when these two were at the wicket. And suddenly the part and Rishabh Pant, what one saw was that <coughs> he was... Uh, very sure about what he was doing and what was good about Rishabh Pant was that sometimes he would have made the England players wonder as to how Rishabh Pant is doing it. Sometimes he used to have a wild swing at the ball and used to send the ball uh, into the stand sometimes as a one-handed stroke with the same power and they probably the England players would be wondering that uh, you know uh, where does he generate the power from. With one hand he used to slap it for a six and Rishabh Pant was the uh, one who hit the maximum number of sixes. He hit four sixes and 15 fours uh, in a knock of 114 and suddenly um, Rishabh Pant and Rahul were really really uh, suddenly uh, one probably thought at the start of the day that India would try to actually draw the match but from 121 for five nobody would have thought uh, that uh, this particular pair really batted in a breezy fashion. If you look at it, uh, when Hanuma Vihari departed, the score was 121 for 5, and that was in the 37th over. Uh, and after that, in 40, uh, probably 44 overs, uh, KL Rahul and Pant added 204 runs for the 6th wicket. So really, really frustrated the Englishman uh, as far as that was concerned. So finally, uh, the score reached uh, 325 and that was the time uh, England managed to break this particular pair and as I said if at all they would have not broken this pair it would have been very difficult for England but uh, luckily uh, that was a delivery from Rashid which was which actually turned uh, from the rough he actually uh, it was a special ball he actually put it on the rough uh, and Rahul actually went back uh, to defend it but the ball turned sharply and turned too much and went on to hit the top of the off stump um, and this was uh, definitely a great ball produced by Rashid 
uh, to Rahul and Rahul was gone. Caught bold Rashid for 149, 24s and 1-6 in that knock. And as far as after that, the next to go, after KL Rahul left, the score was 325 and his partner Rishabh Pant also departed as he tried to deposit Rashid into the, uh, into the upper territory. Uh, but um, this, uh, I mean, uh, so far Pant was doing well by uh, picking up the wigglies, but this time he had a wild swing at the delivery uh, and uh, that was it. He actually hit it uh, and Mohin Ali took the catch. But Rishabh Pant, one thing one has to say uh, that he basically uh, showed a last when he uh, when he reached his maiden test century with a six and that was only uh, India's Virendra Sehwag who used to do it. So Rishabh Pant showing that he can do a Sehwag as well uh, by hitting a six of the um, uh, to, to reach his uh, maiden test century, he hit a six to do it in great style. And Rishabh Pant is quite an exciting cricketer, according to me. Rahul did a great job as well. So Rishabh Pant 114 with 15 fours and four sixes. So as far as Rishabh Pant and Rahul were there, England would have thought that India had a chance here. But once they were gone, Jadija was still to come as far as the uh, Indian uh, locker was concerned. But um, uh, Sam Curran uh, came in uh, and disposed of Jadeja for 13, caught behind the Danish toe with two boundaries. Ishan Sharma also uh, was a victim of the balling of Curran. And after that, there was just the tail enders left. And then uh, and James Anderson, uh, who was definitely gunning uh, for his uh, 564th wicket uh, to become the most prolific uh, um, fast bowler in Test cricket, uh, finally got his due uh, as um, um, Joe Root actually summoned him uh, immediately and uh, James Anderson finally uh, got, uh, got his wicket uh, when he clean bowled Mohamed Shami and that was wicket number 564 for James Anderson <coughs> and Shami was gone for not, Bumrah not out of not and finally the Indian innings ended at 345 all out uh, so India losing the final test match by 118 runs uh, but definitely I thought India put up a great fight here especially Pant and Rahul uh, the architects who did a wonderful job but no avail but doesn't matter um, but as you know Rahul and Pant are the future players for India and I thought uh, they deserve uh, due credit uh, for what they did. Anderson 22.3 uh, was 11 maidens 45 runs and 3 wickets other than that 1 wicket to Braun and Mohin Ali uh, 2 to Karan one to Stokes and two to Rashid um, and well it's all over so England uh, giving a parting gift to their uh, cap uh, to their um, former captain Alistair Cook uh, by uncorking the champagne uh, champagne on him as uh, he was named player of the match uh, England winning the series 4-1 uh, and uh, and also uh, the player of the series was shared by uh, the uh, the very very talented all-rounder Sam Curran uh, and Indian captain Virat Kohli and I thought it was definitely in the fitness of things to award a joint player of the series. So that is as far as the India-England test series is gone, it's all done and dusted uh, but definitely England, uh, I have to England uh, congratulations to England uh, for winning the series against India 4-1. So, uh, so now, uh, now the India's uh, next uh, assignment uh, will be against uh, Australia so just uh, uh, keeping the uh, time I mean keeping the topic on Australia uh, I would like to talk about the Australian team uh, that was selected to play uh, against Pakistan in the two test series which is coming up in the United Arab Emirates uh, there was a surprise uh, sprung uh, as Glenn Maxwell and Hanscombe uh, and uh, I can understand about Glenn Maxwell, but I was really surprised at uh, Peter Hanscom not being considered. Hanscom is typically a test batsman, as we all know. Uh, he's one who actually can uh, really stay at the wicket for quite a long time. So I was really, really wondering. Uh, for me, that came as a surprise. And uh, um, Aaron Finch, who normally uh, has not played a lot of test matches, 
uh, he has been given an opportunity. So Aaron Finch has come into the side and also uh, they brought in Peter Siddle uh, who came back. Now, uh, as you know, the Australian squad uh, is uh, definitely crippled. Uh, the reason being uh, there is no Stephen Smith, there is no David Warner and also they are also crippled in the bowling department as well uh, with injuries to uh, Glenn, um, sorry, uh, Josh Hazelwood uh, and also uh, there are another prime bowler, uh, Patrick Cummins, uh, the genuine pacer. Uh, so that really, really uh, threw a spanner into the works for Australia, no doubt about it. But looking at that, um, what the Australian team has done, uh, the Australian selection, uh, Australian, uh, 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 selection committee, uh, they have gone in for a lot of players who have been performing well uh, in the uh, in the India A Australia A tournament, uh, sorry, the unofficial test matches. So if you look at the team there, Tim Payne will captain the side. Ashton Agar, Brendan Doggett is a pace bowler. He's he bowls uh, raw pace and he was impressive against India A. So he has been selected. Aaron Finch gets his opportunity. Travis Head is retained. John Holland, the left arm spinner. Uh, who actually caused the slump of the India A team, as you would remember. Usman Khwaja, Manus Labushan uh, has got his opportunity as well uh, with, his, uh, with his very consistent batting. Nathan Lyon, Mitchell Marsh, Sean Marsh, so the Marsh brothers into that. Michael Nesser, the all-rounder, has been given an opportunity as well. Matthew Renshaw, uh, Peter Siddle. So Matthew Renshaw plays after the all the controversy that happened. Matthew Renshaw... Uh, Van is coming to an end, I reckon, and so he has been given an opportunity. So, and he would be very uh, happy with that, Matthew Renshaw. Uh, Peter Siddle, who is making a comeback into the Australian team after quite a long time, and Mitchell Stark. So, the Australian squad uh, definitely um, uh, it's a, it, it are going to find it very tough because uh, uh, the Pakistan team is a very, very strong unit and. Um, they have to really, really play very well, but uh, it's an opportunity for all these youngsters uh, to to really raise their hand here as far as Australia is concerned. So there is no place for Joe Burns, there's no Glenn Maxwell, Peter Hanscom and Jai Richardson. One was surprised as to why Jai Richardson was not selected for the test matches. Now that is another uh, interesting thing that one has to look at. Um, uh, they decided to bring in Peter Siddle, probably considering the fact that they don't have much experience in the pace department other than Mitchell Stark. So they wanted someone uh, who could really partner him. Uh, but uh, Jai Richardson uh, has been so impressive. Uh, I mean, was really wondering as to why he could not get the opportunity. But whatever the case uh, may be, uh, this is the composition of the Australian squad uh, to take on Pakistan in the two-test series which is coming up with the United Arab Emirates. So other than that, um, let's talk about the second unofficial test match where the India A uh, actually uh, squared the series uh, at 1-1. Now let's have a look at what happened. So as you know, uh, India A amassed 505 yesterday and the Australia A uh, were bowled out uh, for 213 uh, in their second innings. So that's a very, uh, very low target of only 55, but India, uh, India A were definitely made to work for it. They didn't have it any easy as they lost four wickets for 55 runs uh, uh, to actually go and reach the target and win the match. So let's have a look at the Australian A squad as to who performed today. So 213 all out. If you look at the card there, Patterson 4, Renshaw 19, Head 47 with five boundaries. Hanscom uh, was the highest scorer with 56 and that's the reason one was a bit surprised uh, that he did not make the cut for the um, test series against Pakistan. 56 with 8 boundaries. Labushan was out for not. Mitchell Marsh made 36 with 5 boundaries. 3 Agar, Nesser 17, Tremaine 1, Sweepson 3 and Doggett was not out on 1. 213 all out and uh, the bowling well, it was again the spinners, Kuldeep Yadav and Gautam, uh, 3 for 46 and 3 for 39 uh, respectively. And Shabaz Nadim taking 267, Deepak Chahar 2 for 30. 
India, as I said, were given a very low target of just 55 to win the match, and one thought it's going to be a mere formality, but it was not, as uh, the Australians uh, really started uh, bowling aggressively, and they bowled a lot of short ones at all, uh, as well, and uh, India did a rejig of the batting order. Shreya Sire opened with Shubman Gill, but both were uh, disposed of pretty quickly by Nasser and Tremaine respectively th for three and four. Uh, and the and Gautam uh, was promoted to the batting order. He was out for one to the bowling of Nasser. Uh, Bharat, the wicketkeeper, left for 12. And then finally it was left to Bhavne uh, with, an, uh, with an unbeaten 28, the three boundaries and summer uh, to take them home. But nevertheless, uh, the India actually, the two match series was drawn 1 1 between India A and Australia A. Uh, well, dear fans, friends, subscribers, I don't have much to really dwell on. Uh, it's about time for me uh, to bid you all a very good night on this uh, cricket show. Thank you.